Hi. Um, today I want to talk to you guys about uh, the pros and cons of short-term uh, investing in real estate and long-term investing in real estate. Uh, first off, I'll start off with short-term. Uh, when you're referring to short-term investing, uh, similar to the stock market, you're looking for a quick buck, you're looking to turn a property, i.e. flip as most people know it. Um, uh, so you'll buy it at a low cost, it needs a certain amount of renovations, and you'll sell it at a high-end price uh, for those buyers who are pr uh, not necessarily price sensitive, but uh, they don't have enough cash to A, do the work themselves uh, outside of their down payment, or B, um, they want to avoid the hassle and they just want to buy a ready-to-go house. These are also the type of profile that might buy a brand new house. Um, so when you're looking at short-term investment in real estate, you have to obviously make sure you have a high return. Um, flipping homes, first of all, it's not easy. It's high stress. Um, my argument is that it's higher stress than long-term investing um, because you're at uh, obviously under uh, duress and making sure that you make a profit in a short per uh, period of time. What's more is uh, it's high risk more risk than it would be to hold a property long term in the sense that um, you know the, the market can uh, turn potentially and uh, and you know if you overestimate or if you poorly uh, budget um, you know your overconfidence will lead into a potential loss now when you're referring to uh, this type of development you also got to take into account obviously uh, real estate fees um, you're looking anywhere between um, uh, ten to twenty thousand dollars each side. Obviously, for the purchase, it's not going to cost you anything, but on the sale, it could cost you up to twenty thousand, depending on um, uh, on what you're selling, how expensive you're 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 selling the property for. But in addition to that, you're looking at lawyer fees, um, other closing costs, including land transfer tax. If you're buying in Toronto, you have a double land transfer tax. Um, depending on how the municipalities go in the GTA, we may even have double land transfer tax for us in the near future. These are all costs that you, you don't actually get back in the equity. So when you're looking at an investment property for a flip, you need uh, at least uh, $50,000 uh, in, uh, in return in order to ensure that you can, get, uh, you can make a profit on that house. So for instance, I was looking at a house today $280,000 is what it's listed for. It's being listed by the bank. You know, I anticipate probably $10,000 worth of work with a good, uh, with a good uh, renovator and contractor on your side. Then you're looking at spending about uh, twenty dollars to $30,000 on all your closing costs. And this is including rentals. So by the end of the day, uh, if you have a $50,000 margin, you might leave with $20,000 in your pocket. Um, and you need to always have conservative numbers when you're referring to these things because uh, it helps to ensure that you don't lose, obviously. Uh, the second thing to understand is the more money you have when you're doing a flip, the better off. Because if you're buying at a high, uh, high risk ratio mortgage, uh, then you also have to calculate uh, the CMHC payment, which is your mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance, depending on the house, say on average a three hundred thousand to three hundred fifty thousand dollar house, you're looking at between six and seven thousand dollars in mortgage insurance, depending on your premiums, depending on your credit score, your down payments, so on and so forth. So, as a flipper, usually they have higher margins when they have twenty percent to put down. With that being said, yes, you put twenty percent down on house, so that could be up to a hundred thousand, depending on what you're buying. Uh, but you, hopefully you have the house flipped within three months. So putting a hundred thousand for three months and getting say twenty grand as a rate of return, uh, that's not you're not going to be beating that with uh, banks and anything else like that. Obviously the goal is to get larger. The smaller the house, the harder it is to get those uh, rates of return for flip. Uh, but you also have a higher certainty of the sale because there's a larger market for those homes. Um, so that's, you know, that's a rough synopsis of the picture that you need when you're looking at flipping homes.
when you're looking long term, there's a little bit more flexibility because now you can be looking at location. Uh, you know, like as I was saying, a flip, it's a very high rate of uh, turnover. So the location doesn't have that much of an effect on it because the real estate price, the market value that you buy it at is pretty much the market value that you're going to use as a benchmark towards your sale. But when you're buying in a long term, uh, a long term strategy, you're looking at how does this location appreciate over time? Uh, obviously, you want it to appreciate a lot. So you want to find, you want to make sure that the amenities are there, the infrastructure, uh, the community, schools, um, transit. That's a big one. Obviously, proximity to Toronto, as well as the uh, being close to one of the arteries that would contribute to you getting to Toronto faster. So uh, obviously the general rule when you're investing, in my opinion, would be that you're within an hour to 45 minutes from a drive to Toronto because that's where the majority, it's almost like the epicenter of employment um, and tenants as well as a result. So um, typically long-term investment, uh, you know, putting aside um, investing for your own personal property, uh, if you're looking to tenant the property for the long-term term investment, the goal here is to have just a little bit over your cost. So you want a little bit of profit month by month in order to help uh, cover your uh, any additional unforeseen expenses. So this could be minor renovations, minor upkeep. $300,000 house as an example for uh, your investment property. Uh, two dwelling home. Upstairs rents for on average $1,300. Downstairs rents on average for $700. That's $2,000 net uh, gross income for the property. Your expenses, say for a $300,000 mortgage, at uh, 3% fixed, um, uh, say you put 10% down, you're looking at say approximately $1,200 a month. Uh, those that twelve hundred dollars plus two hundred fifty, say on average for your tax, uh, that puts you at uh, fourteen fifty, plus a portion of the utilities for the basement because the basement usually don't pay utilities as it's inclusive, so you would probably be looking at more around fifteen fifty, uh, from uh, fifteen hundred depending on the size of the house. This is probably gonna be a smaller house, maybe around eleven to fourteen hundred square feet. Um, Yes, so as I was saying, uh, you would you'd be looking at fifteen hundred dollars a month as your base expense. Then you would have um, uh, your profit at two thousand. Uh, so you hopefully looking at it between four hundred and five hundred dollars as a profit on a monthly basis that you can put towards future expenses. Um, you know, capital expenses on fixing a fence, fixing the furnace, fixing the roof, the windows. Um, consider it like a maintenance fee like condos have uh, towards future expenses uh, but this is crucial because this allows you to save up that money or uh, what some people do which is also uh, pretty good is you use that money straight towards the uh, paying down the mortgage on a monthly basis this will drastic drastically reduce your amortization uh, but remember here on the long term uh, the goal is to pay off the mortgage and to continue earning the income. So if you pay off the mortgage in 25 years, uh, under high risk, that's the maximum. So I'll use that example. Uh, 25 years down the road, if you're 25 or 30 or even 40, uh, you'd be looking at 50, uh, 55, uh, 60 years old, and you've got income coming in at uh, past your expenses, maybe 1500 bucks a month uh, in profit, um, you know, that's much better than most pensions. So, um, and if you do that once, twice, three times, you're living very, very comfortably. And, uh, and reality is, is you can own three homes in, you know, in the span of five to 10 years. And, uh, you know, by the time you're 60, if you're, if you start young and you start early enough planning, you won't have any problems. You'll be able to retire and live a comfortable life and do what you want, right? Um, and uh, over that time, you keep putting down, and I, I'll show you how you can only have to put 10% or uh, ideally 20%, but not everyone has that, 10% at a time if you want to start. And uh, that'll allow you to 
you can do it zeros down, but they're not typical for investors. Um, but you know, thirty thousand, fifty thousand dollars at a time. I know it sounds like a lot of money because it is, but in the reality, that type of money will quadruple over time with the increase in equity, the increase or see the decrease in your uh, in overall debt reduction, uh, and as well as uh, as um, you know. Uh, Pro property value decrease in debt, uh, in debt and um, yes, and then oh, the income. Sorry, the, any profit you gain would also help towards increasing the property value as you do upgrades. So, uh, two very very different strategies to make an income. Uh, like I said, I prefer obviously the long term investment. Short term investment is good, um, especially once you get rhythm and you have income to continue to invest. Um, so they're very two different styles uh, for very two different types of people uh, but both work if done intelligently and planned out thoroughly um, obviously you're gonna want to partner with your real realtor I'm you know I'll volunteer but uh, I do know what I've talked about I've, I've looked into flipping homes uh, already as young as I look I've also I own my own property investment property and my own property as well so it's two homes uh, and I've owned my investment property now for just over two years. So um, I know what I'm doing. I've been to the landlord tenant board. I've worked with tenants, uh, you know, I've evicted, I've, I've brought new tenants. I've done the whole kit and caboodle. So uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to give me a call. Like as always, visit my website for any more information or email me at bradley.harman at century21.ca. Thank you for watching and um, wish you all the best. Bye for now.